This is a ball balancing robot, or more formally known as a Stuart platform. It's an omni-rotational and omni-translational robot that's programmed to not let this ball fall. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I made this robot from start to finish. Let's begin. I began the project by designing the robot in Autodesk Inventor. I then sourced out all of the electronics. I used the TNT 4.1 microcontroller for the brains of the robot, a Pixie 2 camera for object detection, a logic level converter, six of these high speed servos, and a Palulu Maestro servo controller with speed and acceleration control. Next, I created a full schematic of the circuit and then created the circuit on a half proto board. After that, it was time to build the robot. As you can see, the robot can orient itself any which way. This is thanks to a bunch of equations that model the robot's every movement. These are called inverse kinematic equations. Lots of math and models went into deriving all of these equations. I mainly use vector calculus when doing this. In the end, all of those models create all of these equations. And all of those equations are used to output six angle values for the servos to turn to, given a specified orientation for the robot to be in. Having all of these equations also allowed me to simulate how the robot would move before I ever built it. Another vital component in the working of the bot is its ball balancing capabilities. It does this using a PID algorithm where the set point is the center of the platform. Using the ball's position and velocity at any given time, the robot is able to prevent the ball from falling. Since the camera is able to detect the ball's position at any given time, the velocity can then be calculated over a given time interval. This is how that works. Imagine this is the camera looking above at the robot and the ball. We could define the center of the robot as the origin, zero, zero. We can also define the location of the center of the ball as an arbitrary x, y. Drawing a vector from the center of the robot to the center of the ball gives us the error value of the PID algorithm. Let's also imagine that at this point the ball is traveling with a velocity towards the left. We can draw a vector showing this velocity. In order to move the ball towards the center and to decrease its velocity, we must both take into account the position of the ball and the velocity of the ball. The PID algorithm does this by adding the error vector in green to the derivative vector or velocity vector in gold and reversing its direction creating the output vector in blue. This is a simplified explanation, but a lot more goes into allowing the robot to balance the ball without it falling. PID tuning plays a big part in allowing the PID algorithm to be effective. As you can see here, I'm changing the magnitude of the velocity vector to have different effects on the output vector. This is an example of PID tuning. I'll cover the effects of PID tuning with this particular robot more extensively in my next video. The whole process is kind of like keeping a ball balanced on a wooden plank. You accomplish this by counteracting both the ball's velocity and position relative to the center. Now it's time to dump all of the equations and the PID algorithm into a complete program. I programmed this robot in the Arduino IDE. And now we have our complete robot. The robot also has a couple of cool features that I discovered during the build. If you reverse the PID outputs, instead of finding the fastest and most effective way to keep the ball on the platform, the robot instead finds the fastest and most effective way to throw the ball off of the platform. If the PID algorithm isn't tuned properly, you can also get the robot to do some pretty cool tricks. Here, the output is way too high, so it swirls the ball in a circle. Because the robot is hypersensitive to the ball's position and velocity, the ball can never reach a state of equilibrium. And ultimately, in the end, it falls off. 
And that concludes the end of this video. This project is completely open source, so if you would like to build this robot, check out my instructable link in the description. There you can find step-by-step -step instructions and all the CAD and code that went into this project. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, check out my Instagram account. Thanks for watching.